Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Brapsody. Today I'm here at Motorcycles of Greensboro with the professor, Paul, and Sam. Isn't she pretty? Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. Uh, bro, how are you, brother? I'm living the dream, man. I'm Welcome back dream. home. Thank you. I hear you've got some exciting news. Yes, some really exciting news. Uh, okay, so I am going coast to coast again. Thanks to you guys. You guys got me into this whole mess of going coast to coast last year. Who got going to what? <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was it? <laughs> oh, it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take the brain. I'll yeah, take the yeah, brain. Yeah. Yeah. I've done two, two successful coast to coast rides for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Yay, and that was a huge success. It was. I've, right? I was able to, I've been able to raise more than $20,000 over the two rides that I've done last year and this year so thank you guys and all of you guys who donated and helped me How and support me following you on that it was hundreds it was hundreds yeah and that was cool it was awesome that was man it was really so awesome. great to get these texts and everything with watching his progress and all it was it was cool so i'm going coast to coast again next uh, next friday november the 10th yay yeah, and it's i'm doing it for a cause that's really near and dear and really really close to my heart i'm writing for the november foundation and I'm writing for men's mental health and suicide prevention. Now, why did you pick that one? Uh, <laughs> so, because that's a cause that's very near to me and it's personal to me. Uh, okay. I had ADHD growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. I found it terribly hard to focus on academics. Uh, I struggled a lot in school, in high school. I had to repeat my senior year in high school and the suicide prevention because I was at a point in my life at that when I was 17 that I couldn't take it anymore and I just wanted to be done with this. Mm, that's why you say it's personal. It's very personal and I was really lucky that my father saw what I was going to do and he kind of helped me make a decision. Mm. And We would say that we were the ones who were lucky for that. Uh, thank you. Now um, yeah. I, I thank my father for dad for all of it. Uh, he helped me make a decision and see things a little more clearly. So, uh, my escape from reality at those times, uh, where it was a depressing time for me, I used to always dream, uh, daydream a lot. And one of my biggest daydreams was uh, my recurring day daydreams was, one day I'm gonna be on a motorcycle, wide open roads, and there's no one or nothing that's gonna holding that's holding me back or pulling me down or anything like that. And guess what? The last two rides I did, uh, there were times when I got really emotional because some of the scenes I was seeing was just like a deja vu moment. Mm. So yeah, this is this is personal and I, and I want to do this for men all around the world. Uh, because did you guys know that every hour, statistically every hour, there's a man who's taking his life around the world. All over the world, there's one man every hour who, that seems to be an awful lot, isn't it? That seems to be an awful lot, and I want to do this ride to shed some light on that, on that, and also to let men all around the world know that, you know what, there's, there's a way, there's always a way, no matter how dark the night or how, how hopeless it might seem. Reach out. Um, I know it's hard to do, but reach out. There's two ways to right? You can reach out for help, but you also should know how to deal with it and how to help someone who's reaching out for help. You'll always hear words and phrases like, you know, man up or get over it or, you know, grow up hair and things like that. Yeah, those sound really... A few people say, tell me more about what you're going through. Yes. A lot of times that's all you need to do is listen. Um, and motorcycling quite literally saved my life. And then much, and even as recent as five years ago, I went, I went through a divorce and it was a trying time for me again. And uh, yeah, it was dark, but motorcycling again, helped mm -hmm. me clear my head, mm -hmm. helped me focus, um, helped me find purpose now. And what started- a little bit of an outlet too. Yeah, because it's mindfulness, right? Because you're riding Absolutely. in the moment, yeah. And by the way, like and subscribe <laughs> like and subscribe yes well, because yeah. your support means a lot it, it does, does. And, and especially when it comes to this kind of messages yeah. and why we're doing what we're doing and especially why he's doing what he's doing it's really important and you know with the amazing help and support from all of you guys the subscribers the viewers um, 
I'm so glad I chose to stay and chose to fight and chose to live another day. Yeah. So, so are we, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we're happy you chose to stay and uh, to live another day. But that's what I'm. So that's why I'm doing this ride. Okay. It's, it's deeply personal, and uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be in November, so it's gonna be a little chilly in some parts. Yeah. But why are we standing are we in front? Be right? Yeah. What? Exactly. What's? T what's going on <laughs> there? <all> questions. <laughs> so again, guys. So I wanted to do this ride, so I reached out to some of my friends, such as my buddy Paul here, and I was like, Hey, I'm gonna and Sam, of course and the professor and all these guys here. And I was like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, this ride. Uh, what do you guys think? And they're like, we'll tell you what, you, what I think. And it's <laughs> awesome, first of all. First of all, they were like, oh, this is amazing and this is awesome. And then they're like, what are you gonna ride? And I was like, I have no idea. And then Paul said, I have an idea. And what was your idea, Paul? My idea was that we could set you up with a BMW K1600 and you could travel in luxury and comfort and safety as well as some performance. So that's what I'm riding, a BMW K1600 bagger, quite like the one right behind us. Um, ah, that explains a lot. That explains a lot. Yes. So a huge shout out to BMW Motor at North America for uh, supporting me twice in two years. This is, I am, Extremely grateful and very honored and humbled at the same time. Also, thank you to the BMW Performance Center, who will actually be supplying the motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've been a big help as well, uh, and they believe in your message and way to go. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you to BMW Performance Center as well. We did a ride uh, a few months ago. Paul, uh, I did it with Paul, Andrew, and a bunch of others. We did the BMW Off-Road School at the Performance Center. Uh, Check that video out. Uh, I think there's no cussing in that video. Uh, there might be a little bit of if, Well, I think if drops, if motorcycles were dropped, there's got to be cussing. cussing. You can't, yeah. you can't drop a bike and not say, "Oh." There's an awfully descriptive <laughs> passage. <at> the <laughs> they also offer certification riding for Motorcycle Safety Foundation. Uh, and at the end of this video, we'll have the way to get a hold of them and contact them if you yeah, want to do something. Like add that. a link to the yeah. below. The I'll add the link below, and that it's on like a what a 100 acre site or something crazy uh, like that. It's uh, 135 or something. Yeah, 135 like acre, and the track there is amazing. But the real fun, in my opinion, is the off road school. You're gonna have so much fun, and you're gonna learn so much, and you're gonna drop the bike so many times, and you're, and if you're like me, you're gonna be cussing out Paul and Andrew who dragged you there <laughs> <laughs> on well, day number one. Well, well, day number two was a blast. Well, if you off road, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when you're gonna drop the bike. It's yeah. just, it's just part of the game. It's not the jump; it's the land. <laughs> right, Richie? And the, and the, the instructors over there are just fantastic and phenomenal. They are so patient and so knowledgeable and so kind. And these are people who do this for a living, like riding off-road for a living. And besides the motorcycle purchase in itself, learning how to ride is the single best investment you can make when it comes to your skill set and performance riding Perf and, and motorcycling in thing. general. In general. And those As the performance uh, center instructors would say, uh, the ultimate farkle is knowing how to ride it. It's the best thing you can add to the bike. Yeah. We've done a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. We've done a lot of fun things uh, with these guys here. That's part of the motorcycling therapy that we were referring to at the beginning of the video, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. It's having something to do with people who you care and love, like friends. Yes. Um, and it's something that you have in common and you share the passion. And that in itself is therapeutic. It's therapeutic. And motorcycling is wind therapy anyways. Yes. You feel the wind, it's being mindful. It's, it's an exercise in mindfulness because you can't think about the past, you can't think about the future, you're thinking about the present yeah, moment. Because when you're riding a motorcycle, you have to be present, present. in the moment, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So motorcycling did it for me. There's different things, different ways and different avenues of therapy. Traditional therapy may may not work for you, depends on each individual, but there are so many other outlets for therapy and motorcycling happens to be one and it really, really, really saved my life. And, 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 and historically, it's proven itself to be that because, yes. you know, the first form of therapy that a lot of the Vietnam veterans got was 
a motorcycling. Actually, even going back to World War II. World War II, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the veterans that would come back home with, uh, uh, you know, PTSD. PTSD. I mean, that, they found motorcycling to be their therapy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's a good friend of mine taught me. He says, you know, I'm going to go get me a therapeutic session with Dr. Throttle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, last time he, he said it to me yet once again, I'm like, it clicked. I'm like, okay, I'm borrowing that one. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, no, make it yours. I'm like, no, I'm borrowing that one. But yes. And, and, and I also want to touch on one little thing there. It's like therapy is not a bad thing. It's not a bad word. It doesn't mean you're, you're weak or you're any less of a person, of a man or anything. It's just accepting you need some help. Um, and asking for help is, in my opinion, is the strongest and bravest thing you can do. So mm -hmm. yeah. mechanics use tools. Riders get training. It's not uh, uh, it's not a sin to ask for giving yourself the best tools you can have to live your best life. Absolutely, and never ever feel ashamed of asking for help or reaching out to people. And if you find it really hard to reach out to someone, thousands, millions of people have resulted to motorcycling. Mm -hmm. Try that. Thank you guys once again. Thank you so much. And thank you to BMW Motorrad and the BMW Performance Center. This is going to be one fun ride. It's always going to be right o'clock. Right o'clock. But so stay tuned, guys. And oh, I also have the link to my fundraiser page in the video description below. I'm trying to raise $5,000 uh, for the Movember Foundation. If you'd like to help me out and help millions and millions of men out there, feel free to make a donation by clicking the link in the video description below. It's going to be kick-ass. It's going to be a lot of fun. See you soon.